This one's just for fun. Very simple. All right, I'm gonna make a glass bottle and we're gonna put a little treasure map inside it. And that's it, all right? So, over here in Blender, I'm going to, uh, there we go. I'll take the camera and the light and let's move those to another layer. Let's get rid of the default cube and let's switch to Cycles Render. All right. And then let's go to Top View, 7 and 5. And we're going to go Shift A and add a plane. And that's going to be our map. Now, I may want to scale this in the X, make it a little bit more rectangular like that. All right, so we're just going to leave it like that. And now we need a map. And there's lots of them on the internet. You could search for um, ancient uh, world map or whatever. Uh, but I find, found one and I'll show you. Now, in order to get that image of a map on a plane, we're going to have to UV map this. Very simply, though. All right, so grab these three um, lines right there and pull. To split the screen into two with a mouse cursor over here I'm going to hit T to get rid of the tool panel in this window and over here T to get rid of in that and I've got the same thing here but I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click and I'm going to switch to UV uh, editor all right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my map now let's see if I can find it blender reference images I should have one in here let's try this one this Caribbean map and then you can see it right there nice big thing all right all right so with that there in the UV window I'm now going to come over here with my mouse over here and I've still got this selected in edit mode I'm going to hit U and I'm just going to choose unwrap and I get this now I may want to pull these points up but I want to see how this looks first so to do that I'm going to switch click here again and I'm going to switch to what's called the node editor and this is for um, hit N by the way to close this side for adding materials and, st and images and stuff like that so I'm going to come out of edit mode back to object mode all right object mode down here and I'm going to switch this over to material I don't see anything yet but once I put the image in I'll be able to see it there we need to give this a material and then to that material we're going to add the image of the map so back in the node editor window here I'm going to click on new and that's going to put down some default boxes called nodes already this has a color a white color and we can see that there so I'm just going to slide this across a little bit I want to add something to this I'm going to go add texture image texture that's the same thing as like an image map I'm going to click that that puts out a box it's still selected so I'm going to drag it over here and I'm going to collect connect this color yellow dot to this one just by clicking and pulling and doing that all right now it turns black because there's no actual image selected but because I opened and let me zoom in a little bit because I opened that map earlier when I was in the UV editor it's in memory so I'm going to click here and just choose it and now I can see my map there so I do want to do some scaling in order for this to fit better so I'm going to come back to the UV image editor I have to go back into edit mode here and let's try first of all I'll just show you if I hit G for grab and in the Y, so if I go G, Y, so it's constrained, if I pull it up, you can see the way the map is moving. What if I was to sort of center it there, deselect, and then use B to box or border select and draw a, a box around there, and then go G, Y, grab in the Y and pull it up to there. All right, so I get that line there. Deselect and do the same. B to box select G Y and pull down sort of an equal distance like that 
deselect and come over and look at let's go back to object mode and deselect there we go there's our map looks pretty nice all right so we're all set we have a map on our plane let's close this window by pulling on those lines until we see the arrow and then release there we have this full screen okay let's save our work now we're going to create a bottle for our map to be rolled up in and just sit in there all right so in front view let's create this out of a cylinder we're going to make a very simple bottle so i'm going to go shift a mesh cylinder all right i'm going to leave the default values of 32 vertices but i think i'll switch from the cap fill make sure that it's on nothing which it is right now let's hold control and the z arrow and bring it up so it looks like it's resting on the ground okay front view again let's make our bottle let's go into edit mode now we're just going to make a very simple bottle i'm going to zoom in and deselect and then just turn a little bit and i'm going to go shift alt and click that edge right there let's pull this up i'm holding control and it will sort of snap to these increments these grid uh, grid lines so i brought it up a little bit and now what we're going to do Gonna be in front view for this is hit E to extrude, and I'm gonna pull it up to about there, maybe there, that's sort of halfway, and I'm gonna hit S to scale, S, I'm gonna pull my mouse in like that. I'm gonna do that one more time, E to extrude, and I'm gonna pull it up just to there. Looks a little bit like a thermos, but that's okay. And now I'm gonna come to the bottom and go shift alt and click that edge. We're gonna close this off. I'm gonna hit E to extrude. S, I'm going to pull my mouse in just a little bit. Let's do that again. E, click, S, pull it in a lot farther. E, click, and then Alt-M to bring up the merge dialog box and choose that center. Just hit enter. And that has closed this up nicely. Okay, now, let's go ahead and try adding a subdivision surface to this and see what it looks like. Okay, it's very, it's very smooth like that but we want it to have more of a bottle shape. And so we're gonna add some edge loops and beveling and stuff. So I'm gonna go back into edit mode. So I'm just hitting the tab button to do that, but you could do that down here, edit. And I am going to, as you, you see the way, when the, you get the subdivision surface, it warps the shape of the bottle. I'm gonna go control R and I'm gonna bring an edge loop up close to there, but I don't want this to be too sharp. So let's come out and look. Okay, it's not too bad. Let's add an edge loop down here to make this look a little sharper down here. Control R, pull it down near the bottom, not right at the bottom though. Let's try that. Let's deselect, that looks okay to me. Let's fix up this top part here. All right, uh, let's go Control R. Let's try bringing one in here, just about there. I like that. And let's do another one here, Control R, and bring it down a bit. I'm just squishing out this white jelly-like uh, non-distinct stuff. All right, so I'm not bringing the edge loop here right to this edge. I'm just bringing it in the vicinity to sharpen it. But remember, this is a glass bottle. It's not too, too sharp. All right, let's also try, let's close that up, adding a solidify uh, modifier because right now this is paper thin and glass is not that thin unless you're in a Hollywood movie, um, we want to add some thickness. So select your object in object mode, go add, modifier, solidify. And it's it's very soft because it's a subdivision surface, but it's also still pretty thin. So I'm gonna drag this until I like the thickness. I want this to be kind of thick glass like this. And I like that, and so I'm actually gonna apply that now, because I've got a subdivision surface that looks, it doesn't give it as, uh, as much thickness, but I'm fine with that. So let's go in and add some more edge loops because that subdivision surface is smoothing it, but we wanna sharpen it a bit, a bit more. And what we want, what I want, I don't want this quite that round. So I'm gonna come in, 
I'm going to go control R and pull an edge loop up near the top. And you see the way that black area is becoming sharper, more thicker instead of, instead of like this, it kind of just blends. I do this and it's like pushing it up there, but I'm not going right to the very top. I don't want razor sharp. All right, I'm going to put one there. And also on this lip right here, I'm going to go control R and I'm going to pull one towards the middle. And I'm going to go control R and I'm going to pull one towards the outside. Let's have a look at that. There's the effect that we get. That might even be a bit too sharp for the glass. I'm going to try something here. I'm going to reselect this edge, this one, shift alt and click it that I just put in and I'm going to try getting rid of it. I'm going to go X dissolve edges from the delete menu, dissolve edges. Let's go back into object mode and let's look. Do I like that better? No, not particularly. I think I will keep that in and I'm just going to leave it there. In fact, I might even want to put an edge loop in here and that may help me a little bit. Let's try that. All right. Do I want anything in here? Do I? I don't think so. I think that's going to be just fine. Let's just have a look at the overall shape of this. It might be worth putting an edge loop here, pulling it up, and another one here, and pull, just pulling it down, just to reinforce the sides so they're nice and straight. Now, this might be a bit too big. <laughs> Or maybe I want a narrower neck, but I do want a jar-like thing. Let's have a look at how we could adjust that if we wanted to. One thing we could do, if we wanted to, if I wanted to make this a little thinner, we could try that, is we could go into wireframe. All right, or right down here, from solid to wireframe. And in wireframe mode, we can B to box select this whole upper area now I'm in edge selection mode right now. I could have been in vertex or in face, doesn't really matter. And I could shrink this in, but not affecting the height by going scale, but to avoid the Z going shift Z. So let's try that. S shift Z and let's pull it in. See the way it narrows? Let's see if we like this effect in solid view. I might want to pull it down a little bit. It seems a bit long now that I've done that. It's still selected, so I could now just go like this. Just being aware things may happen when you do this around the edge of the bottle. You know, that's fine. It looks a bit like a medical jar to me, like something with specimens and formaldehyde. All right, well, good enough. All right, so now let's see what we've got. We've got the bottle and we've got the map. Now if you compare the size of the map to the bottle we can see that, um, here I'll go over to, I'll try material like that. We can see that the map is quite a bit smaller and it's going to be rolled up so let's now adjust the size of the bottle in every dimension. I'm going to do this in object mode just here in object mode and I'm just going to scale the bottle like that, bring it back down again and sort of just compare the sizes of these and try to imagine this rolled up standing inside. We can of course adjust all that later. Um, because I scaled this in object mode, it's a good idea to, um, for example, if we come over here, hit N and look at the scale. Um, I've got some weird 0.525 numbers, but if I go uh, Control A, and apply scale, watch those numbers, they go back to one, like Unity sort of, and I don't mean the, th the 3D package, 3D 2D package, oh I love Unity, that's my next thing to get more into, um, alright anyhow, I was going to pull that down, we're good, we got a jar, <laughs> it does look like the jars I use for, you know, when I was a science teacher for sulfuric acid or HCl, you know those you know, plastic jars you'd you'd have around the lab room, not the stock bottles, but you'd have the 0.5 molar stuff in there. Anyways, that's what it reminds me of. We'll see. It's still it, it may be too wide. Scale shift Z. I may want it something like this. 
I think I probably do, but we can adjust that. Maybe it might be too tall. I think it is scale in the Z. No, we'll get it eventually. All right, anyways, just messing around. Okay, it's time to curl the map. So the bottle is there, the map is here, cool. Okay, let's just look down on the map for a second and think about how we're gonna do this. <clears throat> right now, this map is just a plane. It's one poly. To bend it, you know, you want to fold a piece of paper, you know that we have to have a crease in it, right? You got the edge, and you got the edge, and you got to have another edge in the middle to fold it, or a crease. We're going to have to put some creases in this if we want to roll it up. And so the way I think I'm going to do this is by putting um, creases or edges this way. We'll try it just this way. Hopefully we don't need them. Uh, going this way, although we may put some in if we do a subdivision surface. So here's what we're going to do. I've got the plane selected and the image is there. I am going to go Control R, and you see that pink line, and I'm going to roll my mouse wheel up like crazy. I'm going to do a whole bunch of these like that. I'm going to try that. Click and accept. Deselect. Done. Didn't change our picture, but now we have more um, geometry if I select it you can see I've got all these edges lots of creases I could use as we roll this thing up and that may not be enough we'll find out though um, let's save okay now to fold this thing um, let's hide this map H to hide it alt H to bring it back let's hit H to hide it for the moment in order to create the coil the curve structure that I want for the paper to wrap around, I'm going to do it like this. Go into top view and create a plane, shift A, mesh, plane. All right, there it is. Go into edit mode and I wanna select these two vertices on the right, X, and delete those vertices. So I only have these two left now. I'm gonna scale these in the Y, S, Y, and pull towards the middle and then I'm gonna hit G to grab and I'm gonna just pull right to around here on the green axis the y-axis now the distance between these vertices is gonna create the distance between the coils so imagine if I go like this okay and it spirals in each arm or coil or turn how far away do you want that from the other one like electrons orbiting an atom, let's say. How far out are those shells or that kind of thing? I want them relatively close so that I get a nice um, rolled up piece of paper. If if the distance between the turns are far, my paper is going to be like, you know, rolled up with big distances between each part of the paper. I know that's hard to explain, but so you just got to experiment with the distance between those. So I actually think I want them closer. So I'm going to scale in the Y again pull them closer and I'll just move this up here okay leave those vertices selected come over to the toolbar here or the tool panel and click on screw and before you freak out come down to here where the information about screw is and change Z to 1 and change Y to 0 now we can see we're starting to get a coil but there's more that we need to do we can determine how many turns this should be. I'm gonna change this to maybe three at the most. And you see this thing here? This is what I was talking about. It determines the distance between this part of the you know, spiral and this part of the spiral, okay? Having it closer together, further apart. The other thing that we can do though to make this smoother if we need to is change the number of steps. I can increase that and add more polys just to make it smooth. I'm not sure it was going to really matter for the wrapping of the map. But anyways, okay, so we got that so far, right? Now, let's switch over to edge because what we really want is an edge. And I'm going to click on, let me try this. I'm going to shift alt and click right on. I know it's hard to, to see. Well, here, let's go back into solid view. All right, there we go. I'm blinded by that white. I'm going to want an edge that goes all the way around like this and then this, 
and then this. So I'm going to shift alt and click right there. And that's essentially what I'm going to get. Now I could just separate that out. Oops, top view. Um, but I can also go control I to, to invert my selection, like in Photoshop, invert selection, and get rid of that stuff. So I can go X, delete edges. And I'm left now with just what I want. This stuff right there. Okay. Now I'm going to go into vertex selection. I'm going to choose this vertex. And all I have is the coil. I want to extend this out a little bit. Here, I'll show you what I mean. E to extrude and just pull in the X direction like that. This kind of looks like a rolled up piece of paper, right? It's kind of like it's flat here and then it rolls. This is the part that's going to cause a bit of the trouble though, this distance to there. If you had a piece of paper rolled up like that, like a newspaper, it might not look that natural. So we may have some fiddling to do with this. But anyways, that is what we want back into object mode. That is, is what we're going to need. But we're going to need this as a curve, not as polys or a mesh. Um, and you'll see why in a moment. So with that selected, I'm going to go Alt-C, Curve from Mesh. I can tell it's a curve now a couple ways. I can go into Edit Mode and I can see it looks like that. And I can also see this icon right here, which is the curve stuff. We don't need to do that right now. What we do need to do is go Alt-H to bring back our map. And we'll realize that the spiral is laying down sideways. We want to rotate this RX90 like that and bring it up like that so that it's so that you can imagine if you slid the paper into it, it would it, and it had to fit in the space, it would slide around here, slide around here and that. Okay, now uh, we can switch back to material view if we want so we can see our map and we can see our curve. And here is the cool part coming up right after this. With our map selected, choose Add Modifier, Curve, and for the object, choose that thing. All right, that, it's called Plane 01, because I made it out of that, but you could we could have called this something different. And now what we're going to do is we are going to experiment with moving the map into the curve and you may have to as you saw what I just did there um, you may have to let's try one more there it is all right all right there's my there's my map there and just move it around it's not being affected whatever because I have the curve modifier but I got again I'm gonna and you can do this a couple of ways you can use the eyedropper and click on that or I mean we can come over here and it's called, this is called plane 01, you know, call it spiral if you like. All right, so that when you select the map on the modifier tab and you got the curve modifier, you can then go in here, okay, I'm gonna choose spiral. Now, you can adjust these, push the X and you'll stay, oh, it's, it's kind of weird, okay. Pull it, pull it down so it's close to the surface of that and then use the X and pull and you can see it's feeding through the problem is that this as you're pulling this it gets quite far away and goes off the screen so when that happens my 3d cursor is right here come back and go set origin to 3d cursor and that'll bring the that gizmo right back there and you can do it again all right so here's the thing the map is rolling, but it's too big. I mean, the, those coils are too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. It's going to change things a little bit. And I'm just going to go scale. And pull it down like this. And then the map goes all weird. That's all right. Just hang on. Origin of 3D cursor. Let's bring it back out. Okay, wait a second. Now, it's, now we're getting somewhere like this. Let's go origin of 3D cursor again. So, so far, so good. It looks a little bit like we need more, uh, you know, because you can see the folds there. And that corresponds, if I go into edit mode, it's going to go flat again. But that corresponds to these lines. There's not enough geometry yet to, to, to bend it into a curve that's quite extensive. 
you know, taking something flat and making it round, let's add a subdivision surface of two. Let's try that. That's a lot smoother. We can also do smoothing. All right, it's coming along nice. Now, this also, though, curves the edges. Let's try simple. And we'll see if it looks good enough. I can try going one more. You know, vertices will go up, but that's not a big deal. Okay, that's that might be looking all right. Let's see what happens if we move it above the curve. I just click the arrow. See, there's the curve modifier, and there's this the subdivision surface. It almost looks worse above. I don't know. I can do one more thing in addition to this. I can tab back into edit mode, and I can make sure it's all selected, and I can subdivide one more time. I'm going to do W, subdivide, just like that. It'll put a little bit more in, and then we can come back and say, okay, I think that's probably going to look all right. It may have been folded at one point as a map anyhow a little bit. All right, well, that's kind of what we were looking for, but it, it's still a bit uh, it's still a bit big. So let's see if we can do any more. If I select the curve again and I hit S to scale, can bring it down. Let me try bringing it down really small and then pulling it out like this. Uh, we get that. Oh, I selected the curve, not the paper. Select the paper. Let's see if we can just uh, we start getting that. So let's undo that. And let's just think about this for a second. We can do probably a little bit more. Let's scale this just a bit more like that. Just till, just until I see this piece starting to to oh, oops. starting to go there. Okay, I can go with that. And then I'm going to take the map and I am going to apply the curve to it and say I'm done. And hit apply. I don't have to apply the subdivision surface. I can actually now delete that curve if I wanted to. The map is done. It's curved. Let's bring back the bottle. And let's take the map and let's rotate this around the X90. Okay. Let's also set origin to geometry and pop it back in the middle. There's my map. You can look look right from there. And those coils are a little bit big, so sometimes you just have to fiddle around with it. We're going to make it smaller though right now. Let's scale this, scale shift Z, and pull it in like that so it sort of fits inside. That's not too bad now. You might even want to try solidify. Now a piece of it is sticking out, so let's do that. Okay, let's see how it. Uh, let's go into wireframe now and see what happens if we try to sort of rest it on the bottom. Right, right about there. Back here. Okay, I'm in just. I'm not in uh, material view. Let's save that. Let's go back into material and see what happens if we were to put on a solidify on there. Would that do us any good? And we don't want it too thick. If I did that, I do like this, the uh, solidify, so I'm gonna try clicking that. Ah, that's fine with me, I like that effect. All right, so there's our map in our bottle. You know, I kind of want the bottle scaled in the Z shorter. Like I want more of the map to to show through there. Let's hit one and look. Let's bring the bottle back down to there. And let's look in wireframe. Yeah, I think that's probably possibly it's okay. Let's go shift A and put a plane down here. Or did I have a plane already in there somewhere? No, not there, there's that, okay. And let's go S8, scale it up eight, and let's, for material, let's just click on new, and let's just choose a red color, and darker, and just leave it like that, all right. So there's our map, and there's our bottle. Let's bring the bottle, let's actually bring everything on this layer, M, move it back to the first layer. So I have that 
let's go back and look at this uh, in material. All right. And let's see where our, where's our plane. Looks right on the ground. Okay, so let's select this and this. And not the plane, though. And bring it down just a little bit more. Okay, so far so good. Let's have a look with the camera and lights. I'll select that. I'll hit zero to look through the camera. And um, let's go to the inside panel. I'm going to choose lock camera to view. I'm going to zoom in like this. Let's have our first look. Shift Z. Okay. There we can see our map and our bottle. The map is looking a little bit um, faceted. Maybe I needed to subdivide it more. I should, possibly should have done that earlier. Something to think about. Uh, let's go out of camera view and find that light. And what is this? Let's, there's a sun. Let's click. Uh, oh, it's a point light. Let's click sun. Change the size to say three and use nodes and change the strength to say five and just leave it like that. Go back into camera view and just have a look. All right, it's starting to look okay. We now need to do something about that bottle, but also I want to hit the home button and make it more full screen. Okay, cool. Well, I think for this, I am just going to use a glass material. Let's try just a typical glass material. So select the bottle, click new, and under surface, choose glass. Uh, Beckman, leave the index of refraction, choose the color. I just want it a little bit more green. We'll try that and see. Let's have a, have a look at what that looks like. bad let's come out of camera view and let's do another let's maybe just take this light and shift D copy it and bring it over here and just move it and just try different views and uh, hit R and try to get it to point it didn't work did it R and pull <laughs> just try to get it to point towards that from the side of the camera and I actually I like Hemi so I really do that might be too bright though, but let's just have a look at that. And I just want to turn this. I like I like those kind of shadows. Alright. Well, that's the general idea there. Let's take this and scale. We could also decide maybe we'd like to use a different lens on the camera, like say 50. All right, that'll give us a nice, nice view. Uh, I'm not sure I want that edge there, so. All right. Let's try this. Let's see, can I select that? Maybe if I reduce the sun there, maybe I make the sun a bit more cream color, and maybe I make the hemi a bit more opposite maybe a little bit more bluish and maybe uh, no, let me go to materials on the glass maybe I don't want that so we we'll stick with the whitish color let's just preview that okay you could do whatever you like with that get a bit of a reflection there is something else though that we could do to make it look uh, a little bit better um, and that would be to split the screen again with my mouse here hit T and my mouse here hit T switch this to the node editor one more time and to close that side and click on the world icon down there there's nothing there let's put in um, an environment a world environment so it's to get rid of this black and that will create some some more light and stuff to reflect off of like trees and buildings and stuff all right, so what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here where it says use nodes. Just click that. And that'll lay down this stuff, background and a world output. And we're going to go uh, add or shift A, texture, 
environment texture. Drag that up here, connect the color to there, and there's nothing showing yet. All right, see the pink, it doesn't know what to do. Let's open, and for this you need something like an HDR uh, image. You just search HDR textures, and these are all free ones from the internet, and just find one like this one. Okay, nice, something nice and bright, just, just click open. And then actually, if I hit five, you can actually see the world there. You can scroll around and you can see different parts of, of the world. We're just floating in the air with that. But what that does is it creates some reflections of, of clouds and stuff on here. It creates more light. So um, that, that's how you put that in. Uh, and then so now we can let's just stop that. Let's close this. And let's go back to camera view and let's go shift Z to do sort of a preview render and there's a bit more blue and, and, and reflections uh, here now from, from that so um, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll do a render uh, of this and uh, I'm not gonna fiddle around with it anymore you can mess around with lights and colors and the glass and other objects in the scene I'm just gonna show you what it looks like uh, in a moment so I'll be back in a moment this is what my render turned out to look like and there are things that you could certainly do to improve this um, for example I just used I'll come out of that for a second in my rendering um, I just used the sample of 200 you could certainly increase that especially with the glass I put my clamp indirect at 3 <clears throat> you could experiment with numbers between say 3 or 3 to 10, somewhere in there. I also used the denoising feature of uh, version 2.79. <clears throat> and that gave me, um, where to go? There it is. That gave me a pretty nice render. You could change the color of the glass and you can work on lights. You can add more lights, larger lights, to help reduce any fireflies, but I'm not really getting them. And again, um, the map looks a little bit, you know, choppy. All right, so you could increase the subdivision uh, when you start out uh, and really subdivide it. I mean, this is not too huge, considering this is pretty smooth. A lot of vertices here compared to here, and there was a good number there. But that's just basically how you could go about rolling up a map and putting it in a bottle. Thanks for watching.